Yeah, Professor Prachka and I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting us to this interesting meeting. Um, as we are surgeons, uh, we're going to show some, some scenes from the surgical side, so uh, just be uh, aware of this. Um, before I start, I'd like to uh, comment on some of the technical terms. I'm, I'm quite sure you're aware of the term uh, virtual reality. So in virtual reality, you wear a head-mounted display. Uh, you have two displays, one for the left, one for the right eye, and you have, you're, you're going to be emerged in a computer, uh, um, into a scene produced by the computer. Uh, in mixed reality or augmented reality, you see the real world around you, and on top of uh, uh, that, you get to super emerge the, uh, the computer generated image uh, produced by the computer. So, um, when we perform uh, surgery, of course, we need to know uh, the individual uh, anatomy of the patient. We need to know, for example, in liver surgery, where is the tumor, uh, where are the uh, important vessels, as you can see over here, uh, where are the bile ducts, for example. And um, <clears throat> when we perform surgery, we have surgery, um, certain tools, like the black tool you can see over here, that interrupts the rather soft liver tissue and keeps uh, the vessels, uh, the bile ducts, alive. And thereafter, we have to address these uh, vessels and uh, uh, suture them, clip them, in order to uh, disrupt the, the tumor tissue from uh, the uh, healthy tissue of the liver. It's something you can see right over here. So this is one of those vessels. So um, prior to uh, operating on the patient, we need to know the individual anatomy of the patient. And usually, uh, we have a look at this anatomy uh, in discussion with the radiologist. And we browse through uh, CT scans up and down and have to build up uh, a three-dimensional model of this individual patient. And how great would it be to have this three-dimensional model generated in mix of virtual reality and then just, you know, browse, uh, th uh, th uh, instead of browsing through these CT scans, walk around, move this kind of three-dimensional image. This is what you see over here. So we develop a certain workflow in order to generate, to segment the data and generate three-dimensional objects and have a look at this object thereafter. Having this prior to surgery is one uh, aspect. Having it during surgery is another. And we uh, evaluated this technology as well. So we, uh, we positioned uh, this kind of three-dimensional model in a first case study right above the surgical side, as you can see over here. And this is actually uh, scenes uh, recorded by one of those head-mounted displays. It's called HoloLens. So this is hovering above the surgical side. And in this case, the first assistant, just by looking up briefly, he can be reassured about the anatomy of the patient. So again, this is real footage of this head-mounted display. Of course, um, having this three-dimensional object hovering above the surgical site is quite nice, and it's much better than uh, leaving the surgical site, going to the screen and browse through these uh, CT images again. But um, this, uh, this situation, of course, could be improved by superimposing uh, the uh, computer-generated image right into the surgical site. And besides a lot of technical problems we have, uh, with this kind of approach. Of course, we need to address um, the interface, how we're going to generate uh, these images. And uh, we generated a replica model uh, based on real patient data. That is something you can see over here. And we tested uh, certain strategies for showing uh, depth and mapping volumes. This is what we have, volumes, to a surface. And you can see it makes a huge difference on how we're going to do this. So we have to play with contrast, with colors, etc., uh, transparency of certain structures. And all of a sudden, uh, you can imagine, or you can see something like this. So you have this kind of glass organ. So you actually see the anatomy within uh, the surgical site. So this is one of the examples we are uh, working on. Uh, another is uh, uh, <coughs> 
combining uh, this kind of uh, technology with <coughs> ultrasound and uh, by uh, having this, the image driven by the ultrasound right underneath um, the, uh, the um, detector, you actually have a complete different view on uh, how to, uh, on the, on the uh, anatomy and how to, uh, for example, have a biopsy uh, of certain tissues. Another aspect is uh, learning and teaching uh, in surgery and um, observing, although this is kind of exaggerating, is a very important aspect uh, in surgery and uh, therefore we try to uh, simulate situations like in the OR by um, producing this kind of volumetric OR. So uh, we have a photogrammatic representation of uh, one of our ORs and we are even able to record volumetric video of certain aspects so the, the person can, uh, integrate, can be integrated into the OR observe surgery. So my time is running off, so just a final thought uh, about VR in surgery. Uh, in robotic surgery, the surgeon is separated from the surgical field, as you can see over here. Um, and of course we can think of uh, having a 3D representation of the anatomy and the surgeon could operate these kind of uh, robots uh, within VR. And this is something uh, that could look like uh, this. So the surgeon is operating while interacting uh, with uh, three-dimensional objects right in the surgical site. Thank you very much.